Yo, what's going on, Nomads and Drifting Podcast listeners? Welcome to Backspace Nomads. Every week we talk about gaming topics, discuss game releases, and occasionally have on gamers to talk about their personal gaming stories. You can find us on BackspaceNomads.com or on our Twitter at Backspace Nomads. This is episode 35. Uh, I'm Brian, one of the hosts, and my other host here is Monica. What's up, Monica? What's up, Brian? How are you, friend? I'm so good. I think we're both finally over a sickness. So I've just I've had a rush of like good feelings and energy this week. So that's awesome. I'm still coughing up some like chunks, but it's very rare now. Ugh. Yeah, nice. it's been great. It's good. Vision. Um, speaking of like, we occasionally have people on. I've been thinking about it more, and like, we really have to like reach out to some people. I know. <laughs> I. <laughs> I just feel like we've become introverts and it's like, we don't need friends. We don't need whatever. In reality, there's so many good stories out there. So I, I should probably hit some people up and, and to our listeners, if you have a good recommendation for somebody that you want to have come onto the show and have us pick their little brain mm-hmm. and have us tell, have them tell us their deepest, darkest secrets. You they want to share with everyone. You should tweet at us. Let us know who you're thinking of. <laughs> at Backspace Nomads. <laughs> uh, I was feeling like we were just kicking it until TwitchCon so we can like s- like get sensual with people there, you know? Bring them in. Oh. <clears throat> well, you know, I think our viewers can still participate. I would love giving them to. Us, and giving us their suggestions. <laughs> also, <laughs> this is the Pledge Drive episode, everyone. We know you hate this time. <laughs> You've never experienced this time on the podcast, but we have a pledge drive happening today, and I'm mm-hmm. trying to use my best NPR voice I can. I sound a little bit raspy with my normal tone, so this is the smoothest I can be. And I just want everyone to know that we would love and appreciate it if your support could go towards liking our iTunes and leaving us a review. We want to become more popular and we know that you are an important important facet to our continued growth and even existence. So thank you to all of our listeners. Please come to iTunes, a review, just one little review, just one little like can can really just change a big like can really change, (laughs) change and, and, Add on to how we can do things here. Yes. You Likes. listen to us on your morning drive. You re- you rely on us to give you pointless information week after week. <laughs> Please, again, we've got one hour. Please go to iTunes. <laughs> this is fucking ridiculous. We yeah. need 10 likes this hour and five reviews. Thank you so much for, for participating. Oh, look, someone in, over here in um, Seattle, Washington just Ooh, Seattle. just liked. Thank you so much, individual, uh. anonymous individual from Seattle, Washington. Oh, and here we have we have someone from um, from Nevada. Um, Nevada. Oh, Nevada. No, Nevada. No, no, Nevada. This is Uh-oh. how we say it oh, okay. on okay. the West Coast. Reno. Wow. We've Ooh. got a Michael um, Scott. Uh, thank you so much for that, Michael Scott. We appreciate it. All right. Now From we're going to shut up. That's the <laughs> only thing I can think of right now. I can only think of one name. Anyway, seriously, go fucking give us a follow and give us a <laughs> great <laughs> review. I mean, I mean, I mean, thank you so much for yes. your patronage. Yes. This means so much to us. Likes you. change lives, okay? Likes change lives. Uh, for for real. Uh, we need it. Come on, dudes. Where yeah, are you at? Just, you know, it just helps us with discovery and growth. Uh, hit us a like and a review if you f- feel so inclined. We'd appreciate it. Yeah. Um, put you can put promo code into your review. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> promo code uh, likes save lives. <laughs> likes save. Li- like save lives promo code yes that's all you gotta do it's like facebook just post whenever there's a tragedy mm-hmm. uh what have you been playing this week with my dilly donger <laughs> <laughs> what 
What? I don't. I haven't had any time this week to play anything. I just. Been... What have you been doing? You've been watching news, like. <laughs> I mean, I've been working. I've been working hard for my money. Dun, dun, so dun, hard dun. for my money. You're a working, um, lady. And I'm like Dolly of, Parton. Yeah, and outside of that, um, yeah, I've been following some news. You know. Uh, what do you think about the Harvey Weinstein shit? Weinstein. 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 Weins. The Wienerstein. Steiner. Well. Um, I think it's fucking disgusting. That's what I think of it. Yeah. I think I think it is re- repulsive. I heard a recording. Apparently, like some model had gone to the police, Ugh. and then they re- decided that they were going to like th- she went back in. They wired her, put a wire on her, and it's literally her just saying over and over, like, no, I don't want, what is this? No, I don't want to do this. And he's like, just five minutes, five minutes. I'm not going to touch you. I'm not going to touch you. Just come into the room for five oh, minutes. Come into the room. And he and she's just like, no, no, no. And it, supposedly, um, this was this was recorded by the police and they didn't fucking do anything about it. Like... The police didn't do anything about it, or like the district attorney didn't. Do I don't either. know. I don't you know? know enough. I don't know enough. All I know, what I know, is that when I was listening to that tape, that is every, that is every cringy fucking moment I've ever had at a bar or otherwise yeah. of a guy just being like rude or almost like aggressive with me when I tell him that I don't want to talk. I have had. God, one of the weirdest fucking times in my life, I was at a bar and I was hanging out with my friends. One of my friends was really, really drunk. And this guy was just really pushing for her and she was blacked out. And I was telling him like, dude, like go away. And he was just like, you're that bitch, huh? And like started getting on my case. And I was like, dude, she is not in her right mind. She can barely stand up, like go away. Yeah. And he turned around pulled his pants down, mooned me, and pulled his butt cheeks apart. I am not joking you. This guy was so upset with me that he felt yeah. the need to show me his asshole. I don't know. I don't I didn't, know. I didn't even realize that was like a level of anger that you could achieve. I don't you know? know what was happening. I was shocked. I was appalled. It was very, very hairy. I <laughs> did not like it. And Oh, God. I could just go on and on. It's disgusting to me. It is disgusting to me. And I just bad for dudes with like hairy ass cracks. No. (laughs) Like, what do you do? What do you do in that situation? What do you mean? What do you do? You do you just live with your hairy ass crack, or do you actually like get it waxed and stuff? You just live with it. Ugh. That's disgusting. (laughs) I don't because can you imagine like trying to wipe and you just get little bit dingleberries like constantly. You gotta have good good toilet paper. Dude, all I dated right. a guy that I didn't had, mean to sidetrack us. I just I dated a guy that had hair all over his entire butt cheeks. He had like a hairy butt. <laughs> oh, boxers and briefs. I got my own. <laughs> <laughs> um I didn't mean to derail us, I'm sorry. Uh what do you think about it? Uh I think hard like that type of behavior is disgusting and like very creepy and predatory, and I don't like I think it goes way like deep in Hollywood. Um, I know on Reddit, I've seen that Terry Crews has said that, you know, he's had his ass grabbed by a male executive. Um, I think I was, I, I just caught the headline of James Vanderbeek saying the same thing that like some male dude, like, you know, grabbed his fucking ass. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just, it's so fucking weird to me because it's these power plays. It's this yeah. God, it's this God mode where you just think, I can get away with anything. And what sucks is that so many people do yeah. because when you are desperate to make it yeah. and you are passionate about something, like if you and I were to go to it, be in, in, invited to be a part or like go meet with like a big um, podcast collaborative yeah. or something, I would go. And if they started being creepy to me i would be like fuck like i don't really want to mess this up especially when i was younger i don't really want to mess this up but like i'm not comfortable right now at this point i would just be like fuck you fucker yeah 
but I'd be but throwing like, haymakers. Like, fuck but that. that when I was younger, for sure, I would have been like, I don't know what to do. You know, I didn't sure. have that level of confidence. Well, like I, I, you know, I've never been uh, sexually harassed, but I do know that when I've been coming up in the restaurant business, um, when I was young and I wanted to make it with like chefs and stuff, I left some very like very good like chef gigs and like sous chef positions because I didn't agree with the way chef was handling it. I seen him, uh, you know, sexual harassment in the restaurant industry. It's like mm-hmm. fucking par for the course. Like I seen some shit that I wasn't cool with and I left the fucking job and like, like I'm not doing this. I'm not going to be a part of this. I do not think that it's sexual harassment just in the restaurant industry though. It is literally in every industry. Oh yeah. No, no. Yeah. I'm saying like, um, it's, it's like, flagrant and like blatantly obvious in the restaurant industry yeah like you know you'll walk into the beer cooler and see it you know yeah um and i'm saying i bring it up to make the point that like i've left very good job opportunities because i personally didn't agree with it yeah and i i I don't understand i don't want to blame like victim blame and all that like but you have to like at a certain point just like say maybe this is not worth it like me making it in hollywood or me walking this path to make it it's just not worth it yeah but that (laughs) that comes with a level of confidence that a lot of people do not have and a lot and a lot of people and the thing is too like as a female and experiencing this so often and being and then when you and then when you fight back being being blamed or being like oh did that really happen or you know this or that it is a really tough situation to navigate and it's just, to be honest, like it truly, it truly fucking disgusts me. And the, mm-hmm. and another thing that drives me nuts, and I get that people lie. I get that people lie. But no one is questioning this because you have famous women backing mm-hmm. them up. People that like, everyone's sure. like, oh, I've seen her in movies. Yeah, yeah. So like that, and, and it's multiple. So it's like, oh, he for sure is a creep. Oh, yeah. It, it doesn't this is, help that he looks like a fucking creeper too. Oh like, yeah, no, he's got the he's got the look. <laughs> like when this came out, uh, they just show you one picture, and I'm like, yep, hundred <laughs> <laughs> like, percent. There ain't no way he didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been it's been it's been a rough week for me. I actually I, I've read some things. I've, I've 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 almost heard enough. I don't need to hear all of the other stories anymore. I get mm. it. Um, I'm not being any more enraged by listening to more stories. I'm just disgusted and, and sad and, and in some ways excited that this is getting so much heat because this is exactly what needs to happen when women are saying like, these are the things that are happening to me. Yeah. You know, this is what needs to happen where it's like, without a doubt, this, this person you know, has, has screwed over these multiple women. And most times there's not going to be just one instance. Sure. I don't know. Fucking sucks, dude. All the women who didn't make it and he just like took advantage of, lied to, and then like, you know, never saw him again. Like how many of those do you think are out there? Oh, tons. I'm sure there's even more people speaking out. Not to mention all the people that sued and like got a settlement. Yeah. Can Can those people speak out? No. No, yeah. They're not allowed to say what happened to them. They sure. have settled, so they're they are not allowed to. And there have been tons of them. Yeah. It was in his contract. Yes. That he is allowed he was allowed to sexually assault or whatever, and he had to pay like upwards of a million dollars on the sixth offense every time someone paid plus all of the legal fees for the company. It's like Dude, in his contract. Net worth? I don't think I'm a I don't know. Like for him to have that in his contract, where he's cool with getting his paid doc for a million dollars, so he can like grow up a check, you know? He didn't care. It's sick. It's sick. It's it's to a point where like women are no longer human. We are a game. We are we are prey. We are a game. We're a game. We're not humans. We don't have souls. We don't have feelings. We don't, you know, we're we're not. We're just an object. And fuck, like I'm a fucking human. Like I have feelings. Things like that hurt me and they yeah. can impact a person for a really long time. Things like that take therapy. Sure. And it's where, fucked up. Where do you think we go? Like, cause like he's doing it on like the biggest fucking scale you could probably do it on. Right. But like this type of shit's going on everywhere. Like, and how do you even start to like deal with that? Like as a culture, 
Like, I think it's been so ingrained in us, uh, you know, since forever. I don't know how far back to even think about this, that women are just kind of like subjugated to men. It's all right to catcall them, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, slap them on the ass, you know, cut yourself a feel. Like, I I don't even know where (laughs) you start to like get away from that. Um, I mean, one of the things is just like, unfortunately, you know, it really sucks because I think that a big thing within, especially like different industries is that if you have a woman who is willing to speak up at the, towards the top, which that's rare. Mm -hmm. And if you have someone that's saying like, Hey, we're not protecting the women in our workforce or we're not, you need that, that voice, or you really need a man at the top that's making these decisions, that's creating this culture to, to stand up and say something against it. And I think that's becoming more and more common. Mm-hmm. And I think women are be, are feeling, starting to feel more and more empowered and more and more listened to and trusted when these things are brought up. But I don't know. I mean, it's, it, we're on the, I think the path is happening, but is there a long ways to go? Yeah. I, I it's funny because like w- the place I work at right now, um, you know, my boss has actually said things before And then he'll second guess himself and he'll say, is that okay to say? Yeah. And sometimes, and sometimes I'll go, yeah, you know what? I think it's funny, but I wouldn't say it in front of like everyone. Sure. Or like, you know, or like, I don't like that. That's a dangerous world to live in though. Cause you know, I'm someone who definitely uh, skirts the line of acceptable humor you know and that's the biggest thing that scares me like oh i know this is a funny joke but if i say it to the wrong person that's not going to be a funny joke i get that but i'm even talking about like with this situation he had said like hey do you want to play video games with me Mm. like we have this corporate condo and he's like hey we could go to the corporate condo and play video games and a part of me was just like at first i was like okay and then i'm like is this one of those situations? <laughs> and luckily, is this Mad luckily for me, like I kind of questioned it and I was just like, well, if it is, I'll leave. So right. it's fine. But, but he, he actually came to me and said, is it weird? Like I started realizing that like, there's a pirate power dynamic there and I'm inviting you. Is it weird? And I mean, I was just like, no, but I did have that moment where it's like, is this okay? Is this, but we talked about it, you know, communication sure. happened. And I think that that's really important. We need to communicate more in the workforce about, you know, what is and isn't okay for us. And just in general, sure. I, honestly, what, what is and isn't okay. Everyone's different. Everyone's different. And, and being able to express like what you're comfortable with is really important. But I mean, like Harvey is just a total like there's just that's a meltdown. Yeah, that's a uh, systematic like decade, decade long predator. You know. Yeah. He should be on like SVU or whatever the Law and Order show. Like he's the dude who should be the creep. As soon as you start having these patterns, these things that you do that you know get results, these whatever, it's the same thing with people with like kids and stuff. Yeah. They do the same thing over and over and over. They lure them in the same way. They go the same. You know, another thing that happened in the news is that there was some drone going over to children's playgrounds trying to tell them to come meet them at a... That's not... Was was that real? It was! They were talking. Uh, A drone was talking and saying, like, hey, come over to the whatever. Follow me. Follow me to the whatever. And trying to get these kids to, like, follow them. I I seen the headline and I skipped it because I was like, there's no fucking way. This is just trying to scare us about something else. No, it's real. Uh, What? Oh, uh, what creeper actually would do that? I don't like, know. I don't know. Let's not talk about creeps anymore. Let's right. talk about... You're, you brought up the creepy drone, dude, I, right? I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right. Let's talk about some Another gaming news. Another type of predator. Another type of predator. <laughs> uh, the loot box predator. <laughs> the looter. <laughs> the loot box. Oh, so EA uh, released Battlefront 2. Um, who released Shadows of Mordor? I don't... Uh... What company was that? Why are you putting me on the spot like that? I don't know. Not know. I need this. I, I need this now. I do not know. Uh, um, it is Monolith Productions. Okay. The developer, publisher, WB Games. Um, so those two companies both put out games within the past two weeks that 
so Shadow Mortar was a single player. Battlefront is a multiplayer game, but both of them have one thing that's in common, and that's that they both have microtransactions involving loot boxes. The worst type of microtransaction in gaming. And there has been quite the tizzy on the internet because of the uh, the microtransaction. Yeah, I mean, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor is just getting hammered right now because so many people are frustrated There's that no they just bought game, this right? game. Huh? There's no multiplayer in that game, right? No, and you just they just bought this game and they are... Um, they are greeted with microtransactions as as soon as they spend sixty dollars yep. to get it. Now, granted, Which, the game itself, some people are are enjoying it, um, but a lot of people are very very frustrated at the loot crate microtransactions. But like at this point, who is buying those loot crates? from like shadows mortar so where they're like oh that was a good idea we're making money off it let's do it in our next game because there are people who just keep fucking buying this stuff in big ways yeah they they they're addicts i would say the people that start buying loot crates and everything are are dealing with the situation Mm. (laughs) (laughs) um and the weird thing is i think i read somewhere that the esrb (laughs) They don't adjust a game's uh, rating based on like if, whether or not it has loot crates in it. But that's gambling. Like mm-hmm. You are gambling money to try and get something. You are pulling the lever on a slot machine. And I don't know how a game can still be rated for teenagers or whatever when they have this kind of gambling uh, mechanic in it. And they, they don't even tell you the odds of winning these things, which you have to do in most gambling situations. Yeah. And so they're getting away with murder here. Like, murder. Yeah, and I think the thing is, is that a lot of of companies just seem to gloss over it. Or like, oh, we understand. And they kind of just, they manage the debacle, you know? Yeah. But it's obviously something that really rubs a lot of people the wrong way. I don't know. I don't, I would love to see, we, we should have looked this up. We should have tried to figure out how many loot crates are purchased daily we're gonna come back we have a few yeah. things we've got to wrap up in the in the future episode okay. we're gonna come back and we we need to like point out how many people are loot crates yeah. and we need to find some people and we need to bring them on the show and we need to shame them <laughs> just we're, say or the, or we'll paddle them the yeah we'll come in and we'll just say hey, don't bring a paddling that's a real thing okay no, we will we'll I just paddled in middle school <laughs> oh no then never mind we don't Talk want about creeps. to trigger <laughs> what the fuck yeah but we we um we we have to fi- try to find out how many of these loot crates because you guys are the problem not yes. our listeners our listeners are lovely lovely little people Fantastic that are going to go onto itunes and give us a great rating and all of that but everyone that is not listening to our show is the problem because they're buying these loot crates and you are just allowing us to be victimized. Team, let's not let that happen. Yeah, it all started like, you know, with CSGO and it felt so innocent then. It felt so fun. And mm-hmm. then the more and more it came out, I guess I think the game after Overwatch is probably the next one that really showed people how to do it on a bigger scale. Mm-hmm. Because their system, I think they probably have the best loot crate system if you're going to think of it as like something that's going to be in the industry. I um, just realized something. Yo. I have to paddle myself because I've bought loots on Overwatch. I have too. Don't paddle yourself. We have to paddle ourselves. Uh, <laughs> are we like the... <laughs> Stop! You don't have to do this. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Oh, you don't watch Game of Thrones or I'd make a Game of Thrones joke. Um, maybe some of our listeners do, right? Oh, we'll just do the shame. Cool, thing. cool. Thanks, shame. thanks for letting me know. Shame. Oh. Shame. You yeah. can watch you can go watch the shame click after this. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe you just made fucking paddling sounds. <laughs> what do you mean? I wasn't making the paddling sounds. Oh, yeah, you're I right. I was paddling the shit out of myself, Brian. I felt I'm weird. raw. <laughs> All right, let's go into the good and the bad, Andy.
Uh, the Good, the Bad, the Indie is a segment where we look at through all the new releases in gaming and bring you our opinion on what games you should play, the ones you should avoid, and the indie games that you need to put on your radar. This episode, we're looking at games released between October 8th and October 14th. Monica, what's your good for the week? My good <clears throat> goes outside of the realm of my comfort zone, but I still, Ooh. it. but it also dug deep into my youth. Okay. I have played some flight simulator games on the PC when I was a wee lass. And so my good for the week is Heliborn, published by Kablaster, Kablider, Clabater, 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 and developed by Jet Cat Games. This is a game that is currently $20, base price $20, on Steam for PC, get behind the cockpits. (laughs) <laughs> of the best helicopters in the world, from the classic machines of the 1950s to the modern gunships of the 21st century, play missions with your friends and compete with Ooh. players from all around the ver- world in various multiplayer modes. I'm a big fan of multiplayer. I don't know why none of my friends will play multiplayer games with me. They're always bitching that there's you. no good games that they want to play with me. And then they pick games that I do not want to play. It is a disaster every single week. But I'm a big fan of multiplayer games. Mm-hmm. And th- this just seems fun. Like, I, it looks it looks awesome, honestly. Mm-hmm. It is it an does. indie game. Um, it's tactical, multiplayer, flight simulating, co-op, like, conglomerate of fun. <laughs> And I, I really, I, this is one where I just feel like I could have fun with, with my friends. And so anytime I see a multiplayer game and think, oh, I can shoot my friends. I can get them out of the sky. I can compete with them. We can work Mm -hmm. together. I get really excited about it. So I I feel like this is a, this is my good for the week. I'm feeling good about it. It definitely looks fun. Uh, I remember the funnest time I've had in gaming probably would be Battlefield 3 when I used to have a joystick and I'd fly around in a helicopter. So, yeah, I'm pumped for Heliborn. Uh, <laughs> my, <laughs> my good for the week would have to be Tales from Candlekeep, Tomb of Annihilation. This game was released from Become Studios, developed and published, released on October 11th. You pick it up on Steam for $15.99. Right now it's on sale for $13.59. This is a Dungeons and Dragons adventure. On a deadly peninsula of Colt, an adventuring party must fight their way through a dangerous jungles, labyrinth, and dungeons to find the reverse, to reverse the cause of the death curse. What the fuck is the sentence? Choose to play uh, one or four adventures and face many perilous challenge and deadly foes throughout the quests. I am a big nerd about Dungeons and Dragons in general. I love the idea of it. Truth be told, I've never actually played a Dungeons and Dragons campaign in real life. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always wanted to, but I don't. I don't typically have like I like real life as, like, a, friends. A little little goblin. Goblin. I, I see. I like doors, man. Oh, but I, okay. I can go goblin. Well, you're a goblin. That's fucked up, man. No one wants to be a goblin. <laughs> Uh, I think, see, this is why your friends don't play games with you. <laughs> That's uh, true. We're very mean to each other. Yeah. So this game just has a very Dungeons & Dragon board game feel to it. You move around on these tiles. Uh, they set you into the, the, the Dungeons & Dragons world. And what I love about it is a lot of the Dungeons & Dragons games that have been coming out over the past decade have been kind of embarrassed about the IP. And they don't go into like exactly how weird it gets. That there's like dragon characters and bird characters, mm-hmm. and like there are heroes that are like just bird characters, like bird humanoids. And this game leans into it; they love it. Uh, so I'm interested. To, I'm probably gonna buy this game to be honest and play through it a little bit because I want to get the feeling of a Dungeons Dragon campaign um, without having the rejection of people saying no, we don't want you in our group. Oh, uh, so how Tomb sweet! Of, Tomb of the Annihilation just. Well, you know what, Brian? I am glad that you're going to pick this game up. I'm glad that you found it. And I, I really I really hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
I just nice. feel like I got a sense of a slice of sensitivity from you, and now I have to be nice to you for the next like three minutes. Are you trying to get me to play games with you later? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So my bad for the week, and oh boy. <laughs> I am excited for this one, guys. I noticed this one because I was like, is that a fucking shitty Monopoly board with like just icons of different (laughs) company names? Like, oh, yeah, it totally is. It's Monopolka. Awesome. This is my bad for the week. (laughs) Not only is this game just a Monopoly game where they just went and did a Google search of uh, companies in in America and then took the <laughs> logo and plopped it onto different. And, and you, you, start, you can sense that just even from oh, looking yeah. at it. But you jump in <clears throat> to this one and I was like, that looks like Monopoly. Monopolka, the de- description, standard Monopoly game amazing um yeah. your pieces are also just probably stolen art i would assume that this is all stolen art it's gotta be um of furries so you're a furry that can buy burger king kfc like a few others they, they altered things just a little bit so like like burger king is not burger king it's burger ring uh they didn't do a very oh. good job it's not it's not crazy here but get this guys not only does this game look like shit and they're using like the most ridiculous font to describe it, but it's also an early access. Ooh. So you can can go and support this game towards completion. How fucking difficult is it to make Monopoly with stolen images? Like what is going on here? Why is this an early access? I am so confused. It actually pisses me off. How the fuck is this on Steam? That's what I feel right now. Yeah. This is just, these are my feelings. How the fuck is this on Steam? This game literally looks like there was a furry convention where two people came together and like, man, we should make like a furry Monopoly game. They're yeah. Like, God, that's such a good idea, bro. Yeah. And so they made this pile of furry shit. You know what? I wouldn't even put this on furries. Dude, this is my favorite part. The screenshots on Steam, they... Just took desktop images so you can see, you'll see their like start menu and stuff like their taskbar. Oh no, <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Anyway, <laughs> this is my bad for the week. Do not go rush out to the Steam store and buy Monopolka. I know you guys were about ready to. I know I'm holding you back, but trust me on this one. You are, you save yourself that dollar. Do not go and buy Monopolka, guys. Uh, My bet for the week is jumping on the why the fuck is this on Steam train, I guess. Uh, Poo Sky. Poo Sky was released October 11th, <laughs> 2017. Developed by CSM and Excelante 23. Mm-hmm. Published by WTV. You can find this on Steam for $1.99. But get this. Act now. It's on sale for 40% off. You can get this for a whopping one dollar and nineteen cents. <laughs> uh, let me run down this horrible game. You live in a cloudless country, on the special clouds, but they came and you run away. You have no choice, and you cannot win. You can only run from these ass faces. <laughs> How long do you survive? <laughs> Will this be your last race? <laughs> this game is an allegory. Oh. You are Paisyon, who runs to a meaning of a good game. Obstacles are indie projects, which every day more and more. You try, you search, but every time you stammer on another masterpiece. Quotation marks. Uh, The game is specially performed in the most beloved program of indie developers, and it is at this level. What? So this game boasts about having a peculiar protagonist who expresses his identity of community. That's exciting. (laughs) Uh, A very deep sense. Apparently they don't have any fucking sense in this game. They they use it all developing it because I don't know how they got this one off the launch pad. I was like, oh yeah, poops guy, bro. Yeah. Oh, Uh, it looks awful. I love, I particularly love that they tried to make um, things funny, but the English is just so bad. Yeah. There's a counter on the top that says, like, shit not happens. 
<laughs> I like there's no and and the and again it's like it's a sad story that could happen to any of us. What shitting? Like I don't get a it's it's awful. It's you found a great bad game, Brian. Thank Good you. job. I am this is like this is my cup of tea for a bad game. Oh, you like the poop sky type of tea, huh? I do, I do. Uh, this game literally looks like Super Mario that has like no challenge and the, the sense of humor. It seems like the kids who sat in the middle of the class, you know? Yeah. Like they're not the smart ones, they're not the funny ones in the back. They're just they're like five rows back. That's yeah. <laughs> That's poop sky. So don't pick that up. Just steer clear. All right. What? So <clears throat> My um, indie for the week is called Metropolis Lux Obscura. Ooh. And this game is, I, I, it's, it's very unique. Normally it's the sexual content, nudity, um, violent games land up on my bad list um, for funny reasons. But this is a unique game with a film noir atmosphere, seductive wanton women, and dirty, dangerous secrets. Gameplay is based on a motion comic with a nonlinear plot um, mixed with match three puzzle fights. So it is a story game. It's it's primarily a story game, but the art is based off of comics. It is just really weird. There's this there are games in between that you kind of like fight someone that you meet um, through it. And in general, it just seems really funky. I, I mm. like comics. I like comic art. And although, um, you know, uh, this game does not like definitely uses like titties as a titillating a aspect. <laughs> um, I still, I think it looks unique enough and interesting enough that I'm, I wanted to, to try it out. It's um, got like a Sin City vibe going on with the artwork. Yeah, it really does. And, and that's, I think what I I'm liking about it is just like, it does have that Sin City also, you know, yeah. um, a graphic novel, but, um, I, I really, I really like it. I don't know. I, I would definitely check this out and at least Sin see if City the story. Candy Crush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sin City meets Candy Crush. Um, but I, I think it's I think it's worth checking out. Um, if you if you like comic art and just seeing what the story is like. If the story's any good, it's totally worth it. I mean, this is this game's priced right, I think. Uh -huh. Um, it's only eight dollars. And um, you know, even if you're not in love with the story, you're probably gonna get eight dollars out of it. Definitely. Uh, my ending for the week would be Insert Paper. Insert Paper was developed and published by Start Reaming. Start Rimming. Uh, released October 10th. Uh, insert Paper is on sale for $8.99. You can pick it up for $9.99 at regular price. It is a game that will test your bureaucratic and organization skills. It's a matter of strategy and rigorous organization. It's important to know what you do, why, and before you do it. You don't know who you are, where you are, but the papers are there. The computers are asking you to insert paper. Your job is here is simple. Arrange the documents. Consider the information required by the reading, reading machines. Uh, I'm going to preface this with, I don't want to go into too much detail because people could find out where I work. There is this guy I work with who, when he gets a big stack of papers printed out from the delivery truck, whatever it is, he likes to stick them together and just deeply inhale the papers. Like, I'm just getting a nice whiff of like a freshly cut paper and this i couldn't help but think of him he would love this game this had to hit my list because of it i have to make fun of you for picking this game because i swear to fucking god a game at least uh, maybe a couple weeks ago you were like i'm not recommending this one uh, if you're into spreadsheets okay here's what okay you know uh, what? are we gonna fight are we gonna fight there's the a difference between spreadsheets and excel sheets and just good bureaucratic documents that you have to fill out. <laughs> All right? There is a difference. How dare you? And this game looks this game looks awesome. It's completely set in the 90s. They boast about having a music and ambience that is specifically set there to resemble the 90s, which is probably the best decade we've ever lived through. Uh, it looks like an orientation video. It just, everything looks horrible. Like, why is it here? It's just this, like, weird humor that I am totally into. And it's a puzzle game, okay? 
Brian, I just feel like you are that doctor's office that doesn't want to get hit with the times. You don't want spreadsheet games, but if you're having to actually, col- you know, um, collate papers and put them in order, Ooh. then you are digging it. Oh, girl, you're talking about fucking language right now. Oh, my God. What are my biscuit? Oh, like no. Copiers, shredders, word processors. <laughs> I'm fucking there. I love it. <laughs> You got to pick up Mr. Paper. I, I I am thrilled. I want to play this game. Like what okay. else am I gonna like probably on a Friday night? What else am I gonna do? I don't know, but I think you need I think you need to play the game. I think <laughs> this is your game, Brian. I'm doing it. Uh, give me the, let me get a quick rundown of your good, the bad, and the indie. All right, my good this week is by developer Jet Cat Games. It's Heliborn. Is currently priced at $19.99 and you're looking at a multiplayer fight tactical indie game. <laughs> My bad for the week is just Monopolka, developed by Coker007. Yeah, that should say enough. It's an early access game that is <laughs> the standard Monopoly game. But it's not the standard Monopoly game because it has... Just fast food restaurants and all different types of industries that you can buy and you play as a furry character, a little furry thing that jumps around. Uh, I'm not even going to say the price because you're not going to buy it, so you don't need to know how much you're going to save there. And my indie for the week is a story game, Metropolis Lux Obscura, kind of, I think you said it right, Brian, Um, a like bedazzled or uh, bejeweled, <laughs> whatever, meets uh, Sin City. Priced excellent by okay. Kaluthu Games at $8. Currently on sale, seven nineteen. You can go pick that baby up. What's wrong with you tonight? And dude? that is it for my good, my bad, and my indie. How about you, <laughs> Brian? Uh... My good, it's gonna be Tales from a Candle Keep. Oh Two? come on, come on! All right, just all right, try all right. it. Just try it. <clears throat> uh, Tales from Candle Keep: Tomb of the Annihilation, developed and published by Becom Studios, released October eleventh, two thousand seventeen. Priced at fifteen ninety nine. Whoa! What? If you are into Dungeons Dragons, but you're like me, you don't have real life friends, this game is perfect for you. Wow. My bad for the week is going to have to be Poos Guy from CSM and Excelente 23. Released on the PC for $1.99 on October 11th. If you want to pick up Poos Guy, you probably shouldn't be listening to this podcast because we don't like you. Poos Guy <laughs> is a horrible sense of humor game where they want you to just give them money. So you, it's a horrible flappy bird that they think Poop's going to make it funny. Uh, next up. Insert paper developed and published by Start Riemann, uh, released onto the PC October tenth, two thousand seventeen, for a price point of nine ninety nine. Act right now, you can get it for eight ninety nine. Insert paper. <laughs> if you are in to word processors, copiers, shredding, corrugating papers, printing papers on both sides. If you're sides, trying to beef up your resume and oh, you've been out of the game for a while, let's say uh. You're a stay-at-home wife, and your husband doesn't want you to go back to work, but you just feel like you want to be a secretary all over again. Pick up <laughs> Insert Paper. It's the game made for you. That's the good of the bad of the indie for the week of October 8th through the 14th. Whoop, whoop. This fucking weird shit podcast we've ever done. <laughs> all right. Uh, we're almost at the end of the show, but real quick before we uh, take off, Let's kind of briefly run down TwitchCon for next week, right? Oh, yeah, we're going to that. We are going to that. You bought tickets, right? Plane tickets? I haven't bought tickets for TwitchCon yet. I should do that. (laughs) Sure. Um, Yeah, we're going. So this is going to be, you guys will be here in this podcast. And if you are going to be in Long Beach for TwitchCon, um, it'd be great to see you. We'll be walking around. Um, Don't be afraid to come up to Monica. And bug her. She's yeah, really don't. Nice. I am really nice. It's weird. I think I intimidate a lot of people, but I'm actually really nice. It's really nice. Just... <laughs> um, I don't know exactly what we have planned in terms of like podcasting. We're definitely going to record an episode while we're out there. Mm-hmm. 
Um, how we're going to do that or who we're going to have on while we're doing it, uh, no idea. Yeah, we're bringing a mic. We're, we're going to try to make it crazy. We're going to get some stories from people while we're out there. Yeah. And we're really excited about it. But more so, we're just going out. We're going to, you know, spread the word of the good Backspace Nomads. It's um, uh, <clears throat> Last year was kind of the spiritual birthplace of the Backspace Nomads. So Yeah, uh, it's true. That is true. Holy yeah. shit. I didn't even right? think about it We're that way. We're going deep now. We are. This is where we all met. And, oh my god! Oh my god! So, um, but yeah, oh, if you're going to be right, out there, right. otherwise, follow us on Twitter and 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 you know keep up with our shenanigans. I'm sure we'll have a few posts out there. Um, you know, maybe we'll just do the whole like touristy TwitchCon thing where we take photos with like everyone that looks cool. Uh, we'll look. So- I've never really done that, but I sh- I should. Dude. We'll look so important. And like we have so many like influencers on our side. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Um, but I'm I am excited about it. So if you guys are out there, for sure follow us. Um, and even if you're not going to TwitchCon itself, but maybe you live in the area, um, you know, we're not gonna be at the convention the entire time. So I always am really, really welcoming. I feel like someday this is gonna kick me in the butt, but most of the time I'm just like, hey everyone stay with us or you can whatever and then eventually someday i'm just gonna invite a serial killer but it hasn't happened yet 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 but yeah we hope we see you there um and again follow us on twitter so you can keep yep. keep up with the the adventure at backspace nomads on twitter that's gonna do it for episode 35 of backspace nomads hit us up at back, hit us up on backspace nomads.com we'll see you next week Bye, everybody. Bye.